For the last month, we've been out in the Outer Banks of North Carolina studying a steel hold shipwreck in the Pamlico Sound by Rodanthe, North Carolina. We're trying to identify the shipwreck and figure out exactly when it was built, what it was, and what it means to the community out here. We're also trying to make a final recording of it before the Bonner Bridge expansion could potentially impact the site in a negative way. When we first looked at the Pappy's Lane shipwreck, it was quite interesting because it has a lot of shape to it. It has a lot of fineness at the bow, and then it comes to a very intact stern. We subsequently talked to some local people and they said that it was a barge and so we took that at face value and local people always have some information that's very important but we were curious to know more. There was more to the story than that story. We had to go through this process of amassing sort of a hit list of potential ship types and then to see whether those ships corresponded with the archaeological site. From the time that I looked at it with my students in 2010, it was pretty clear that it was a very good teaching opportunity. The shipwreck is in very shallow water, it's got an intact structure, and it's also an iron or steel shipwreck. And so we were then able to basically convince the North Carolina Department of Transportation that we could do an assessment at the same time that we carried out an educational program that would teach students how to record a shipwreck, how to use different technologies in that recording process, but also inform them in, this, in the legislative process, in the, in the regulatory parts of the project, uh, and really to have a, a really all-encompassing project from beginning to end to talk about how the shipwreck is still relevant in today's life because it's in the way of a potential bridge construction and to sort of think about all the different facets of studying a shipwreck. The Pappy's Lane project was an opportunity to use a range of different techniques and technologies. We were able to do very traditional drawing, uh, whether it's plan view drawing, uh, profile drawing with, with a range of different methods, but we also looked at photogrammetry, we also did drone-based photogrammetry, we used total stations, we were doing great gradiometry, we were able to look at metal detection to look for subsurface metal. So we were able to use a lot of different overlapping and complementary techniques to do a really comprehensive job of assessing uh, the extent of the shipwreck site. The way that we study the shipwreck is we are working to record it. We are making a site plan, a site map. So we go out there during the day. This is our field school, our field work. We go out there, we set a baseline. Essentially, it's a way for us to make sure that we're getting proper measurements. And we do perpendicular offsets. So we're making sure that we get all of the features that we see, whether that's debris or that's still articulated features of the wreck itself. So you take super accurate recordings, you measure with rhino rules and baselines and tape measures, and you draft that onto a piece of mylar that's attached to a slate in the water, and then you take that and you bring it back to your lab and you piece it together like a puzzle, and then you, the mylars, when they match up, you connect them and then you draft it onto a graph paper to make your site plan. A really unique part of this field school that we've all gotten to experience is dredging, which is an excavation technique that's used to clear sediment off of a site underwater. Uh, essentially, it's a underwater vacuum that's attached to a water pump that we keep up on the boat. And that allows us to remove sediment and actually get at what's underneath, which you can't see with just the naked eye. So the most important activity that we really engaged in to help us determine the type of ship this was, was the excavation of the stern. We noticed this sort of, these cavities, these cavities are called tunnels, and the, the, the Pappy's Lane wreck is what you might call a tunnel boat, right? Tunnel boats are something that we're used to out here on the Outer Banks. They're a feature of vessels that run in very shallow water. A tunnel allows you to protect your propeller if you run aground. And so we found that double tunnel, and we could see where there was a central sort of keel that came out in the stern. And then we went and we started doing some historical research and we came across these two related vessel types called the Landing Craft Infantry or the LCI or the, and the Landing Craft Support or the LCS. And at that point we actually were able to find photographs and blueprints that showed some other features at the stern that were very, very definitively attached to these vessels which were amphibious assault craft during the Second World War. 
So at the end of the field school, we were 100% certain that this is an LCI or an LCS. The challenge that we have is that we have a very degraded hull. The main difference between an LCI and an LCS is the upper structure, is whether it has a ramp or it has some kind of evidence of men running out or not running out, and that material is gone. We have a, a problem in that we have over a thousand vessels. We have to whittle down that list of LCIs and LCSs to see which ones we know were sunk in battles or scuttled after the war or are now in foreign navies or were repurposed into fishing craft, which ones were here to become the Pepe's Lane Wreck. As of today, we still have a lot of candidates to exclude. And we can go through that process and whittle them down one by one, but we've still probably got hundreds of vessels to account for. The other approach is to pick the most promising candidates, the candidates that have a story proximal to here, and that we can then follow their story and perhaps they become the candidate that ends up here and becomes the Pappy's Lane Wreck. And right now that's what we're doing. We have a very small number of very promising candidates, in particular LCS craft that were operating in this area and that are very highly likely or the most likely candidates to have become something that became the Pappy's Lane Wreck. And so we're particularly interested because of the local story about the barge, this being a barge, to look at vessels that were converted into barges. And we have stories of LCS craft converted into different types of barges in the Chesapeake area, and that perhaps were sold here in a very, very late part of their lives to be used for a very specialized purpose where they were just bought for very cheaply in order to do something like salvage, help salvage a gravel barge that had run ashore in Rodanthe in the, in the early to mid 1960s. The potential for this vessel is that it's turned out to be a World War II craft and while North Carolina has a lot of World War II vessels, there's nothing in three feet of water accessible to shore and so it's an opportunity for people who don't scuba dive to interact with it. It's an opportunity to learn about things like the Second World War or American shipbuilding in the 1940s in a very easily accessible place. It's also important, I think, because it's an ecosystem. There is life there to see. It's quite a dynamic place. It's in a location that very few shipwrecks have been looked at. It's actually the first shipwreck reported to the State Underwater Archaeology Branch which indicates how little Pamlico Sound has been explored.